the human species is perplexing. On the one hand, we as people struggle to survive on our own in the wild, usually failing to overcome even the most basic challenges, like finding food, building shelters, or avoiding predators. On the other hand, human groups have developed brilliant technologies, sophisticated languages, and complex institutions that have allowed us to successfully colonize a variety of diverse areas. What has allowed modern humans to dominate the Earth more than any other species despite essentially remaining defenseless creatures, while Neanderthals were sent into evolutionary doom? The secret to human success is not our innate genius, but rather our capacity to socially connect with one another and learn from one another through many generations. Our biology has been influenced by the collective human consciousness, which has hastened the genetic evolution of our species. A number of cultural innovations, including fire, cooking, food storage, plant knowledge, and projectile weapons, were made possible by early human learning abilities. These developments in turn promoted brain development and profoundly altered our physiology, anatomy and psychology. By tracking signals from our distant past to the present, we explore how the evolution of both our cultural and social natures build a collective intelligence, that explains both the immense success of our species and the beginnings of human uniqueness. The extinct Neanderthals, also known as Homo neanderthalensis or Homo sapiens neanderthalensis, were a subspecies or species of archaic humans that lived in Europe up until about 40,000 years ago. In the past, when Neanderthals were believed to be part of our own species, Homo sapiens, the term Homo sapiens neanderthalensis was frequently used. This point of thinking and nomenclature have lost favor, since the publishing of the 1981 book titled Life Before Man. The Neanderthals are not our direct ancestors, despite the fact that we are closely connected to them. They are a unique species that emerged as a side branch in our family tree, as evidenced by fossil and genomic data. By about 300,000 years ago, several Homo heidelbergensis fossils from Europe exhibited early Neanderthal-like traits. It is therefore plausible that Neanderthals sprang from this species in Europe. Biologists classify everyone on the Earth today as belonging to the species Homo sapiens, regardless of their appearance or place of residence. Yet, some critics are also arguing that because of their large noses and thick brows, the extinct Neanderthals should also be included in our species. What then characterizes our species, and who is eligible to join the group? The term, species, which is typically used to identify two genetically isolated populations, is ambiguous, which contributes significantly to the debate. Nonetheless, admixture between modern humans and Neanderthals is known to have taken place. According to the biological species idea, species are reproductively isolated organisms, they can only reproduce with other members of their own species. Since gorillas and chimpanzees are our closest living relatives, all surviving Homo sapiens have the ability to interbreed with each other. Because of this, interbreeding species cannot genuinely be separate species. Recent genomic research provides support for the idea that Homo neanderthalensis and Homo sapiens are two distinct species. This suggests that when the two met outside of Africa some 55,000 years ago, they interbred with one another. Because to this, Everyone alive today who descended from people who lived outside of Africa during that time has acquired a small, but considerable amount of Neanderthal DNA, which makes up roughly 2% of their genomes. Theories about the causes of the extinction of the Neanderthals include demographic ones like small population size and inbreeding, competitive replacement, interbreeding, and assimilation with modern humans, as well as theories about climate change, pole reversals, UV radiation, war disease, and, most likely, a combination of these factors. It is uncertain exactly when the Neanderthal lineage diverged from current human lineage. Research have yielded dates ranging from 315,000 to more than 800,000 years ago. It is also unknown when Neanderthals separated from their ancestor Homo heidelbergensis. Although the earliest possibly Neanderthal bones date from 430,000 years ago, the classification is still debatable. The southernmost discovery was made in the Levant. Neanderthals formerly thought to have lived in North Africa's Jebel Erhoud and in Arabia have now been reclassified as Homo sapiens. The Denisova cave in Siberia, 
85 degrees east, is where their easternmost presence has been documented. The southeast Chinese Maber man, a skull, shares several physical traits with Neanderthals, though these might be the result of convergent evolution rather than Neanderthals expanding their range to the Pacific. In The Descent of Man, published in 1871, Charles Darwin suggested that Africa should be considered to be the birthplace of humanity. However according to other scholars, perhaps Africa was not the only human cradle of humanity. In place of multi-regionalism, some academics suggest a source and sink model to explain the human habitation of Eurasia. They contend that the great variety of fossils points to repeated invasion, intermarriage and extinction events, with climatic fluctuations over thousands of years influencing population expansion and decrease. Cold spells would have made the northern steppe and parts of Central Asia uninhabitable. These places are the sinks. The Middle East is one such locale with a somewhat stable temperature, several islands, and more southerly regions where hominins would have lived and acted as the sources. If accurate, this shows that northern Eurasia has been occupied continuously but sporadically. This hypothesis suggests that we have predecessors in Eurasia, not that our species independently evolved there. Despite the fact that Homo erectus was a great explorer, the majority of his relatives didn't travel as far, choosing to settle in the Middle East due to the area's more accommodating atmosphere. This group was the ancestor of Neanderthals, Denisovans and another branch of our family tree that later gave rise to Homo sapiens. The Altai Mountains in Central Asia, where they have only been positively identified, may have formerly been a destination for roving Neanderthals. Chinese fossils are now employed to pinpoint their distinguishing characteristics. Anthropologists have shown that hominins in Africa and Eurasia did evolve substantially independently for a very long time. The origin of the Neanderthal lineage has been largely explained by the steady accumulation of Neanderthal features over time, or accretion even though Neanderthal ancestors could adapt to a range of settings, harsh glacial conditions would have made it difficult for them to survive. A pattern of recolonization of higher latitudes, following recurring desertification of northern regions into southern refuges when conditions improved would have been caused by glacial into glacial cycles. These habitat tracking dispersals and a sizable number of local extinctions would have profoundly altered these populations, causing repeated genetic bottlenecks and subsequently reducing the genetic diversity of the Neanderthal lineage. The reality is that our understanding of our evolutionary past is always changing, and we have no means of predicting how it will turn out. Eurasia can no longer be disregarded, that much is clear. It's likely that before giving rise to us, the species from which we descended moved to Africa on its own. Later, at least 100,000 years ago, our ancestors left Africa and wandered through Eurasia for thousands of years. Neanderthals were larger and more robust than normal contemporary humans. They also possessed bigger pelvises, barrel-shaped rib cages, and proportionately shorter forearms and forelegs. Although while it has lately been asserted that light skin in modern Europeans was not particularly prevalent until probably the Bronze Age, the absence of sunshine most likely contributed to the development of lighter skin in Neanderthals. Genetically, Neanderthals had BNC2, which is linked to light skin tone. However, researchers also found a second variety of BNC2, which in contemporary populations is linked to darker skin tone. Three female Neanderthals from Southeast Europe were found to have brown eyes, dark skin, and brown hair with one having red hair, according to genetic research. The melanocyte-stimulating hormone, which is encoded by the MC1R gene and raises the ratio of eumelanin, a black pigment, to pheomelanin, a red pigment, controls the color of skin and hair in modern humans. In addition to the R307G variant, which is unknown in Neanderthals but may be linked to pale skin and red hair, there are five known variants of the gene in modern humans that induce loss of function and are connected with light skin and hair color. In fact, a Neanderthal from Italy, and maybe Spain, was found to have the R307G variation. Red was apparently not a particularly prevalent hair color among Neanderthals, as it is in modern humans, given this variety is not found in many other sequenced Neanderthals. It has been proposed that the progeny of Neanderthal females who mated with modern human males were either rare, absent, or sterile, that is, 
Admixture originates from the progeny of Neanderthal males with modern human females. Due to the absence of Neanderthal-derived mitochondrial DNA, which is passed on from mother to child, in modern populations. It has alternatively been proposed, that the hybrids that provided lineage to present populations were primarily females or that the Neanderthal Y chromosome was, incompatible with Homo sapiens and became extinct because modern humans lack these Y chromosomes, which are transferred from father to son. Mode 3 technology used by early Homo sapiens as well as our own species, was a toolkit that the Neanderthals had access to. The Mousterian was another name for this, derived from the location in France. At the end of their lengthy existence in Europe, they started producing a more sophisticated toolkit, known as the Chattel Peronian, also in France, which was akin to Homo sapiens blade tools. This took place at the same period when modern humans first arrived in Europe. Several researchers believe that the Neanderthals made tools similar to those that they saw modern humans make. Instead, they might have traded for these tools with modern humans. In spite of great hardship, Neanderthals survived for hundreds of thousands of years. Over 15,000 years, they intermittently coexisted in Europe with Homo sapiens. They are no longer around today. Notwithstanding these facts, there is substantial controversy surrounding the destiny of the Neanderthals. They have rather extensive interbreeding relationships with Homo sapiens sapiens. Although Neanderthals as organisms no longer exist, proponents of this hypothesis contend that their genes may still persist today since they were present in early modern Europeans. The genus Homo, which includes humans, includes the hominid species known as Homo neanderthalensis. Yet, it has also been suggested that Homo sapiens neanderthalensis is a subspecies of modern humans. As a result, modern humans would have to be categorized as the subspecies Homo sapiens sapiens. Because there were disproportionately more Homo sapiens sapiens, interbreeding reduced the amount of Neanderthal DNA. In this scenario, the scientific term of the Neanderthals is Homo sapiens neanderthalensis since they were a subspecies of Homo sapiens rather than a distinct species. The following are cited as supporting data by this theory's proponents. Certain groups of Cro-Magnon, aka Homo sapiens, have characteristics similar to those of Neanderthals. More so than in later Homo sapiens, Cro-Magnon fossils from Germany and the Czech Republic also display a Neanderthal-like projection of the occipital bun at the back of the skull. Later Neanderthal groups have modern traits. The Vindiger Neanderthals from Czech Republic have a more modern appearance than other Neanderthals, which raises the possibility that they interbred with the advancing Homo sapiens. Alternately, Homo sapiens essentially took their place. In this instance, Homo sapiens and Neanderthals are different species. Although there is no considerable genetic contribution from Neanderthals to modern Europeans in this paradigm, peripheral interbreeding is permitted. Research on Neanderthal mitochondrial DNA demonstrates that it is unrelated to modern human mitochondrial DNA. As the mitochondrial DNA of Neanderthals is four times older than that of Homo sapiens, experts believe that Neanderthals and modern humans diverged between 500,000 and 600,000 years ago. The investigations also show that modern humans from any other region of the world have modern DNA that is not any closer to Neanderthal DNA. Young Neanderthals' facial growth patterns have been studied, and the results suggest that their development differed from that of Homo sapiens. So, the genetic basis of the discrepancies refutes the other evidence. The distinguishing characteristics are chins, protruding chins, foreheads, and brow ridges. Many explanations have been put out for why modern people replaced Neanderthals. Most ideas today agree that Neanderthals did not live as plodding brutes helpless against the immensely superior Homo sapiens, but rather exhibited sophisticated behaviors and adaptive techniques. But, the newly arrived Homo sapiens were doing something that was sufficiently distinctive and superior to offer them a competitive advantage, it's debatable exactly what was a little bit more superior. A number of recent studies that concentrate on the impact of climate change and the minor distinctions that behavior and biology play in these circumstances are particularly intriguing. In comparison to Homo sapiens, Neanderthal reproductive and survival rates appear to be low. 
The majority of Neanderthal bones come from people who were rarely older than 30, and more than half are young. Over 10,000 years, Homo sapiens may have only needed slightly higher rates of child survival and reproductive success to displace Neanderthals. But what about the archaeological data that is often frequently mentioned in favor of classifying the Neanderthals as Homo sapiens? Proving that they engaged in cultural practices like burying their dead and drawing pictures on cave walls? Even if that is fascinating, behaviors should not be included in the biological classification of species since they may be more malleable, change more quickly, and spread between and within species than features based on anatomy and DNA. Our genetic makeup and biology are inextricably related to the creation of culture, and how gene-culture interactions propelled our subspecies along an extraordinary evolutionary path. The story of human social evolution includes elements like trust and trustworthiness. According to evolution, the most successful people are those who are regarded as reliable or trustworthy. We have been able to build cities, make tools, and populate even the most inhospitable environments because collaboration is enhanced by trust. This human achievement in cooperation is unparalleled by any other species, making it a wonder of nature.